Hi everyone, uh, this is Zoe. Uh, so I thought I'd record you a little Loom video so you can, this is used, um, this is recorded on the app called Loom. Um, just to sort of show you how I can give feedback. Uh, I've done it for another student uh, tonight as well, but this is just a generic uh, piece of writing um, that I think I sort of carved together. Um, and it would be in response to an AQA paper one question five. So maybe where you have to write a description suggested by the picture and the picture is a you know, beautiful sunset, for example. So I was going to show you sort of how I look through things, read them and mark them. I'm quite a harsh marker. So there have been cases where teachers have awarded more than I. And that is fine. I would rather mark a little bit harshly than be too generous. Um, so for these question fives, I mean, I haven't got a question on here, um, but they're worth 40 marks. OK, and for AQA, they're divided into AO5, which is Assessment Objective 5, Communication and Organisation, and AO6, Spelling, Punctuation and Grammar. Now, people who are with Edexcel, um, they're very similar questions in terms of the AOs you're looked at for um, AO5 as well. So the assessment objectives are the same. Um, and for Communication and Organisation, it's also AO5. It's what you write, how well it's sequenced, okay? Um, and this is sort of a student-friendly version for AQA, but the rough marks are here, 24 is your maximum. Spelling, punctuation, and grammar, you know, right up to the sort of grade eight, nine, 16, full marks. Um, you're looking at varied punctuation um, for appropriate effect. Standard English, guys, okay? Um, no, no slang, really, unless you were writing a story when a character uttered it in dialogue, but even then, be careful. Um, Accuracy and spelling is marked. It doesn't have to be perfect, though. It just has to be generally, you know, a high level of accuracy. Ambitious vocabulary. I'd rather you try to write a difficult word than miss it out altogether. OK, um, ambitious and extensive use of vocabulary that comes with time and usually with reading. So make sure you are reading very text. To give you those ideas. So I've got an example here. Um, right to describe, um, write a description suggested by the picture. It's got a sunset. Obviously, you're going to have to imagine you're not going to get very much written otherwise um, if you're taking it literally. OK, I think Edexcel only give you um, black and white pictures. Um, so it's quite nice that you've got a colour one here. I'm going to read it to you and I'll give you my thoughts as I go through and then I'll tell you the grade and how I got there. OK, so um, I closed my eyes and leaned against the trunk of an old withered tree, breathing in the last of the long day. As I exhaled, the warmth from the air matched the glow from the sunset before me. The season cast an orange haze above the horizon, lighting up the sky as if it lit by fire. Yet the haze was so crisp and clear. The sun, like a large grandeur, I think it means grand, orange fireball in the distance was partially cloaked by the hanging clouds, which were all splashed with the random colours of hot pinks, reds, and even hints of purples and blues. OK, so we've got a first person narrative, which is conceptually the easiest to write. I, yeah, I did this. Notice the sentences aren't all starting with I, though, which is a good thing. We don't want that. Um, you've got vivid description here of the sun, and I like the use of colour imagery here. It's very visual, okay, this opening. So not a bad opening. I like withered tree, okay, something that's sort of um, shriveling up. Um, you've got words like inhaled, horizon. Grand is a mistake. It should be grand, but that's why proofreading helps. Continuing, it's only four paragraphs, slightly short, but it's not all about the quantity. You, you want the quality there as well, okay? So I'm going to continue reading this now. Uh, the sun was so large that I felt as if I could almost touch it. It seemed to look at me with a dull glare. Nice personification there. You could use that in your writing. Knowing that its beauty and the planet's dependence upon it for survival made up for this. The sun, which had its... Uh, right, it shouldn't be apostrophe there, um, just because there's a rule. If it's it is, contraction, you put the apostrophe in. If it's just its time, possession, no apostrophe. Don't ask me why, just is. The sun, which had its time to shine for the time it was given, seemed to whisper farewell to the world as it sunk lower and lower in a lazy manner, almost as if it never wanted to leave. Yes, you could have an and there. That's OK. So semicolon use. But I knew I, too, had to leave soon. I leaned off from the tree, walking down the grassy hill and ducking underneath the thick pine branches and towards the cabin. A cool breeze passed, making me stop in the middle of the field. I let the wind manipulate my hair as if it were almost a human touch. So again, this is very um, the sensation of touch. 
rather than the visuals so much here. You've got a bit of movement as well, which is, is, is a good thing, okay? I looked at the sun again, short sentences. The sun was almost as orange as the sky, another simile, like a ghost, dash, almost. I like that dash for emphasis there, interesting punctuation. Yet even from behind the trees, it seemed to stare at me, a silent ball of wonderment that was really a raging bull of hell, ball of hell, hellish fury. Yes, I can see that image there as well. The very thing that gave warmth, light, light and happiness to so many could just as easily cause utter destruction. The fact reminded me of life. Yes, nice. You can see that in varied sentences. Finally, oh, we've got a bit of a circular narrative. Look, I close my eyes at the beginning and then at the end, I close my eyes once more. Nice circular narrative there. The events of the day going through my mind like a reel. By the time I opened my eyes, the sun was gone, leaving behind a sea of dark, lonely clouds in a twilight sky. Lovely. So we've got movement there. We've got sunset. Actually, it's set now. The heavens were beginning to litter the stars about. Oh, very nice. Like that imagery. For it was their turn to shine and orchestrate. Nice verb there. The heavens. I stood up straight, knowing that my life, like the seasons, would change and that everything would be soothed into order once more. And like the sun, I knew everyone had the time to shine. A little bit cliche, but kind of nice. Kind of like that. Therefore, I knew it would someday be the same for me. Okay. Not a bad attempt there. Quite memorable too. So if we look at the AQA mark scheme, I'll see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Zoom. There we go. Right. Okay. Writing. What would I give them? Um, it is it is definitely clear. Writing is consistently clear. Don't worry about type audience purpose. Tap. That's more for paper two. Although you do have a purpose here and it's writing to describe um, and the type is just a description. It does. It reads as a description, which is fine. There's a little bit of narration in there. But again, that's not a problem um, as long as you keep it to a minimum in the descriptions um, about the picture. Uh, vocabulary chosen for effect. Linguistic. Yes. Coherent paragraphs. Discourse markers is just a posh word for the beginning of paragraphs to make sure they will link, and it does. So it's at least here. Is it here? Writing for sophisticated, getting there. Don't know if it's, I mean, you've got words like um, withered in there, but I wouldn't say it was all increasingly, maybe. You're probably between these two. Uh, writing is engaging with a range of detail connected ideas. I would probably give it a 15 slash 16. It's between these two, I would say. Um, it's not here convincing, Not maybe not quite enough of it, and the vocabulary is probably pulling it down at this stage, okay? So put it around there. Spag, um, you did have a semicolon effectively used. Yes, variety of sentence forms, definitely. Standard English, definitely. Accurate spelling, yeah, it was just the occasional sort of mistake. That was more proofreading error. Uh, not so much that I would probably give it maybe a 9 and a 15, which would give me 24 out of 40. It's not bad. I'd say it's a sort of, because of the quantity of it, that's pulling it back. There's not quite enough. You've got words like manipulate, withered, um, but there could be more advanced vocabulary in there so i would say that's sort of high four low f maybe a five actually i'd put it a five again i'm a harsh marker so i don't know it's it's quite a six i think that would be reaching okay i'd have to look at what 24 on the grade boundary is because they change every year it's a gut feeling okay you've got it's a 40 marker you've got four paragraphs now whilst it's typed that's a little bit short okay uh yeah i think in the past i've put it as a grade four it's a high four low five i would say i am harsh i wouldn't put it more than a mid five at the moment i don't think there's quite enough you haven't got any sense of the smells in there um you've got a bit of movement i had to leave soon but there's no other trajectory that i can see from your speaker's um perspective so that's something that they could add it does move into the philosophical a little bit towards the end which is nice i like the orchestrate the heavens part it's a nice touch um happy to post this um example up and this uh loom video as well so you can watch back um and hear what i've got to say about it but this is the sort of thing that you may come up with okay and then you would just try to build on it to progress further i hope that's helped everybody enjoy <laughs>